One of the really cool things about Stealth Watch Cloud is that the sensor is extremely lightweight. In this video, we're going to walk through the installation of the Stealth Watch Cloud sensor on a Raspberry Pi running Raspbian. To start this out, I'm going to update the packages on Raspbian by issuing the sudo apt-get update command. In order for the Stealth Watch Cloud sensor to install and run correctly, we need to ensure that TCP dump is installed first. To install it, I'll type in the sudo apt-get install tcp dump command. This usually takes less than a minute to install. To ensure tcp dump is installed and working correctly, let's issue the sudo tcp dump c 10 command, and it should capture 10 packets. Yep, it looks like it's functioning correctly, so let's move on. The next thing we're going to do is get the stealthwatch cloud debian file. You'll see me type the URL in here, but I'll also put it in the description of the video. This only takes a couple seconds to download. It's not that large at all. It's only about 2 megs. And then we're going to go ahead and install this. I'll just copy and paste to make life easier. Oh, forgot to put sudo in front. There we go. Okay, looks like it's installed now. Since my console window is getting a little bit congested, I'm going to go ahead and just clear it out. So just like my regular StealthWatch Cloud virtual machine install that I did in the previous video, I'm going to need to find out what the public IP address is. It's really easy to do. I just need to type in curl https uh, slash slash sensor dot extent observable, observable networks dot com and it'll come back with the actual public IP address that this is that this sensor is connecting from. So we just want to take note of that, copy it, and we're going to pull up the StealthWatch Cloud console now and add that public IP address. So let me just expand this dashboard. And on the top right hand corner on the green button, cloud button, let's go to public IP. And we're going to type in the public IP for my sensor. And click add IP. After that's been added, I'll go back to my sensor list. So the new sensor isn't showing up here yet. Uh, it usually takes about 30 seconds to maybe two minutes to register to the dashboard. So I'm going to just wait a few seconds and then I'll refresh the screen. So let's go ahead and refresh that. And I see here that my, my uh, sensor is starting to show up. I can remove it here, but it looks like it's still syncing. Yeah, if you want to delete that, that's the easiest way to do it. So let's go ahead and change the settings. And under the settings, I'm going to leave the monitoring IP addresses at RFC 1918 addresses. So right now, NetFlow and IFP fix data is not set up, so we'll go back to that in a minute. I'm going to just add a label to this sensor. It's going to be cat home network. And for NetFlow, I'm going to set it up to receive NetFlow data from my firewall, which is an ASA. So I'm going to choose NetFlow version 9, and I'm going to choose the source as a Cisco ASA device. Let me make sure, oh, let me go back in there and make sure the port is set at 2055. And click Save. And it looks like my sensor is nice and happy and healthy. It's uh, got a heartbeat receiving data. So that was just a quick little walkthrough to show you how to set up a sensor on something as small as a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can do this at home. You could do this in a small network. It's pretty easy to do. But uh, if you wanted to give it, try, give it a try, it's really easy to sign up for a uh, StealthWatch Cloud 60-day trial. And you can just use Raspberry Pi to test it out. Thank you so much for watching and hope you guys learned something from this.